Hello everybody, Terry Terry back again with another video and today's video guys is going to be about talking about Roger Federer against Gabashvili yesterday when Roger Federer lost after winning the first set 6-3, losing the second 6-1 and losing the third 7-5. Yeah, what can I say about this match guys? Federer, he fought, he tried and in the end he just couldn't prevail. Gabashvili was just too powerful, too strong, too he is a heavy hitter, guys. We have to understand one thing. Federer is not 25 years old anymore. Even though, and if not, this was not enough, he's coming back from an injury and he has been out of the tour for over one year. You cannot expect just to come straight in a comeback and just beating players he, immediately. You just you just cannot expect that, guys. It's not easy. Gavrishvili is not a easy dude. He had a disaster here last year. Yeah, I know that. But he ha he can hit big balls, guys. He can hit that ball heavy. He's a heavy hitter, guys. As with both his from both of his wings, both forward and back. And his back is really, really rock solid, really hard, guys. He was doing a lot of damage with that back Gavrishvili. Really. The big difference here it was that Feder. I don't. I don't think Feder went particularly down in his level compared to with Matt, the match against Evans. It was just that Bastogsville is a total different, total different opponent, guys. He is the ball much harder than Evans. He has a better backhand than Evans. Evans most likely, Evan, not most likely, Evans more or less always just slices his backhand. And Feder loves that kind of slices because Feder has slices his backhand a lot of times himself. But Gabashvili almost never slices his backhand. He rips it. He can rip it down the line. He can rip it cross court. And he seemed to be in a, a, a good shape, uh, Gabashvili. He seemed to be in good shape. He had a quarterfinal appearance a, a, a couple of months ago in, in a little tournament in, in Australia. And now he's playing uh, a semi final here in Doha after beating Roger Federer. And this was a great timing for Gabashvili to face Roger Federer. It really was a great timing. Because Roger Federer has, like we know, he's not in a best physical shape, just coming back from one year out of out of the tour. And his stamina is not the greatest at the current moment. Usually Federer has a great stamina, to be quite honest. But his stamina was, will not be super sharp immediately. And he said that himself after the match. He said, I was feeling much better physically against Evans than I did against uh, Gabashvili. So, uh, so uh, all in all, a, a, an a, a okay performance from Roger Federer. A, not superior, not great, maybe a good performance from Roger Federer, not more than so. Uh, in the end, Gabashvili was the better player. He was returning better. He was better from the baseline. And, and he was doing much better damage from 0 to 5 shots after he was landing the first serve. Because if you look at the stats, Federer lands 69% first serve in. That is a great number. Oh, almost 70%. But he wins... Only 67% behind those first serves in. If you look at Gapashvili, he lands only 61% first serves in. He lands much less first serves in than Roger Feder. Not maybe much less, but at least less. Roger 69, Gapashvili 61%. But Gapashvili wins 77% behind his first serves in. Compared with Feder, 67%. There you have a, there you have the biggest difference, guys. If, because if you look at the points won behind second serves, Feder wins 50%, Gabashvili wins 50%. There it is even, Steven. But if you look, winning points behind first serves, there you have the biggest difference. Feder 67% winning, Gabashvili winning 77%, even though Gabashvili is serving less first serves in than Feder. And why is this? Why? Yeah, I can tell you why. Gabashvili was doing much more damage from 0 to 5 shots than Roger Feder. Gabashvili was hitting through the court much more than Roger Feder because Gabashvili has more firepower than Roger Feder. Roger Feder, he's not hitting the ball as hard as he did when he was 25, 26, 27 years old. That is a fact, guys. I can see it with my eyes, guys. He's not hitting. Feder is playing good tennis, even though he's almost 40 years old. He's not, it is not like opponents are crushing him. He won his first match after his one year comeback after, uh, outside the tour against Evans. Great, not great, solid performance from, um, from Roger against Evans. But Gabashvili is just a more, he has more firepower than Evans. He has more, he hit the balls, he hit the ball much harder than Evans. And he will do, of course, much more damage against Roger Federer than Evans did. Evans couldn't push Roger Federer side to side. 
because he doesn't have the firepower. And so Roger could, he liked Evans' balls. He was getting to Evan, Evans' balls. Roger was not getting to Gapashvili's balls when Gapashvili was pushing him right and left. Because Roger is not moving as great as he did when he was younger. He's not. If I could say three reasons why Roger lost this match against Gapashvili, one, he was a bit worse returner than Gapashvili. Let's face it, Roger is not the greatest returner of all time. He's not, guys. He has lost many big matches during his career because of his weak returns. Two, he was worse than Gapashvili from baseline. He was. Not much worse, but a little worse, in my opinion. Gabash really was outpowering Roger Federer on the baseline. Three. And this is the biggest difference. Gabash really was doing much more damage from zero to five shots than Roger Federer. This is the biggest difference. And that's, that's why Gabash really is winning 77% behind his first serve scene. Roger only 67%. So Gabash really is winning 10 more percent, 10 more in percent than Roger Federer. Behind first serves in behind second serves, it was uh, it was even fifty percent. They they both won behind the second serves. And in the returning part, that Gabriel really he breaks Roger serves three times out of ten break match opportunities. Roger breaks only one time out of five break match opportunities. Roger always we know that Roger he always needs a lot of break points to break it, because he doesn't have the greatest returns, especially the the backhand return. He doesn't have. Let's face it, he doesn't. Uh, so. And Roger had a match point. With some luck, he could have won that match. For the 23rd time in his career, Roger is losing a match after having a match point. But to his defense, he couldn't do much on that match point. Yeah, I, I, I'm not crazy, you know? I'm not crazy. And it was not in his own serve. Gabas really landed a big first serve, even though it was not a great spot serve. He was landing that in the middle of the serving box. But it was hard and it was fast. So Roger, he sliced that that f big first serve on that match point that that he had he sliced that uh, he returned that into the court but it was short and then Rod Gabashvili he just w stepped it stepped in in the court and he just ripped a backhand cross court to Roger's backhand side and Roger couldn't pa do a passing shot there it was just too heavy too hard for Roger to do a passing shot there so it Nothing Roger could do, could do in that match point. All in all, Gabashvili, he wins 98 points. Roger wins 90 points. So Gabashvili wins eight more points than Roger Federer. So it was not like he was smoking the guy on the uh, yesterday. It was not like, guys, it was not. It, the only set that was one-sided here was the second set when Gabashvili won 6-1. But that also is little misleading because Roger had three break push opportunities in that second set. He didn't convert in any of them. So... Uh, all in all, Gabashvili, too much power, too much fire, too heavy, too much heavy hitting, and Roger just couldn't defend all that hard hitting from Gabashvili from both sides, both wings, both forehand and backhand. Gabashvili is just a completely different opponent compared with Evans. He just takes all the time away from Roger Federer. And Roger Federer is almost 40 years old. We are not crazy. What can you expect? Do you think that Roger Federer will just go out on the court as almost 40 years old and just blow out the, the place out, out of the court? No, he cannot do that, guys, anymore. That's why I don't have high expectations on Roger Federer anymore. Everything Roger wins... In the future, it is only a bonus for a Roger Federer fan like me. It is only a bonus. I don't expect much from Roger Federer anymore. I for sure don't expect to win for him to win any more Grand Slam titles. I don't really don't expect that, and I don't think he will have will ha will win one more Grand Slam. Title. I just don't think so. His biggest chance is in Wimbledon, of course, but. Uh, he will run into a hot firing, hot hitting, big server to the, in the quarterfinal or in the semifinal, and he will most likely be out. And if he's not out in the quarter or in the semifinal against a hot hitter or against a big server, where the big server will find some great returns and Roger Federer will not do the same, most likely Djokovic will wait, will wait at him at, uh, in, in a final. And do you think Roger Federer have a chance to defeat Roger, to defeat Novak Djokovic in a potential Wimbledon final? No, I really don't think so. I really don't think, I really don't think Federer will win any more big titles in his career. Not slams and not even masters. Federer, he had chances to win small tournament in the end. In 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 in, in, the, in his future of his career, uh, uh, some 250 class tournaments or final class tournaments like Halle or Basel, uh, there he has chance absolutely, and let's see if he can catch Jimmy Connors. But even that, I really don't think he will do it. Six six titles away from that 109 titles record that Jimmy Connors have doesn't maybe seem much, guys. Maybe doesn't seem much, but 
in this in this stage of Roger's career, it is it is a lot of titles, guys. It is not easy winning one or two titles in in a year. Let's face it, guys. When was Roger Federer? Has, when did Roger have the the Last time Federer had a really, really good season. It was 2017, guys. Let's face it. When he won seven titles that year. Three Masters, two Grand Slams, and two Final Class Tournaments. After that, Roger has not had a, a really, really good year. Yeah, he has played some Grand Slam Finals and some Master Finals and lost. But 2017, four years ago. And some of you can say, but Roger, he did a great comeback in 2017 after being out of the competition for six, seven, eight months in 2016 when he... Came back, came back in early 2017 and wrapped up seven titles that year. Like I said, three Masters, two Grand Slam titles and two Final Class tournaments like he did in 2017. Guys, that was four years ago. Back then, Roger was 35 years old. Now he's 39 years old, guys. That was four years ago, guys. Four years is much, guys. At least, especially at this high level. He's not playing future tennis level. He's not playing challenger tennis level. He's playing ATP tour level, guys. Everybody wants to beat you. Nobody fears Roger Federer. It's not Nadal, who's 34 years old. It's not Novak Djokovic, who's 33 years old. And, and he has a and, and one other thing that we should not forget. Roger has such a difficult playing style. To think that how successful this dude has been, even though that he has such a difficult playing style with small margins, with low percentage of tennis. He's not Nadal or Djokovic. They play high percentage of tennis, guys. Feder plays low percentage of tennis. He plays slices. He plays drop shots. He chips and charge. He goes to the net. He, he takes big cuts on the ball. And to compare all of this, and the dude has won over 100 titles. That is mind-boggling, guys. I swear to that, guys. It is mind-boggling. And but he could, he could execute this dangerous and this really difficult game style when he was younger. As older he becomes, as much harder it is to execute this difficult game style because he's not like he's not laying back on the baseline and just ripping balls and ripping balls and hitting. Going into long exchanges. He's not Nadal or Djokovic. He doesn't strike the, he doesn't, he's not a clean ball striker a la Feder, a la, I'm sorry, a la Nadal or a la Djokovic. Where have you seen, how often do you see Nadal or Djokovic ha shanking balls? How often do you see? Nadal, you can see sometimes. Djokovic, you never see Djokovic shanking balls. Why? Because they are much clean, much more clean strikers than Feder. Feder is doesn't hit the ball as clean as Nadal and Djokovic, and that's why, because he has a much more difficult playing style. Feder's playing style requires great timing. Really, really great timing. Great conditions. That's why Feder is not the greatest wind player. He's not. The best wind player from these big three is Nadal. Nadal is a great wind player. Feder requires to... Great timing, great conditions, fast surfaces because he doesn't love slow surfaces because he does he cannot hit through players on slow surfaces a la say team or Rublev or, or Nadal. Nadal has a heavy, heavy forehand and can and he can hit through you in slow conditions like it is on French Open. So Federer he he has such a difficult playing style, so you cannot expect Federer in this late of his career to just wrap up titles, not even the small ones. That's why I believe that to catch that 109 title mark from Jimmy Connors, it will be really, really difficult. Is it impossible? No, it is not impossible because it is Roger Federer we're talking about here. One of the greatest tennis players of all time together with Nadal and Djokovic. But I, if I could say... If I could guess now, will he catch that 109 mark? Uh, I, I don't think so, man. I don't think because I don't think he has more big titles in him. I really don't think so. Uh, and the small ones, he doesn't play many small tournaments, guys. And even on those small tournaments, he will face one or two maybe top 10 players in the world. And Feder is not... Uh, Feder doesn't have the level, at least now, to beat top 10 players. At least now. In the future, maybe he will have. At now, he's returning not great. He's not... Super sharp from the baseline. He cannot stand and hang in with plays from the baseline. And he's not doing big damage from zero to five shots. And the courts are not super fast, guys. He loves lighting fast courts, Roger Federer. Let's face it. He doesn't love, he doesn't love medium fast courts like it was here in Doha. It was a medium fast court. He could not, he couldn't hit through Gabashvili. 
He doesn't hit the ball as hard as Gabashvili. Gabashvili, he could hit through Roger Federer because he hits the ball harder than Roger Federer. But Federer, he needs lightning fast courts, guys. Let's face it. In, in this medium fast courts, slow fast courts, he cannot do big, big damage. He doesn't hit the ball as hard as before. He's not serving as great as before, even though he's still serving good. And he cannot stand in and he cannot, he cannot go into long changes. He cannot go in. He can't go in in long extended from the baseline like he could do more when he was younger so if you I, if i give you three reasons why Federer lost against gabashvili was because gabashvili was a better returner gabashvili was a better baseline player and gabashvili was doing much more damage from zero to five shots and was hitting through roger Federer's roger feather and roger feather couldn't hit through gabashvili at least not as many times as gabashvili was hitting through roger feather so there you have my three reasons why roger feather lost this match yesterday all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe and see you next time Peace.